today's topic is rectal prolapse the names it suggests the rectal prolapse is the prolapse of rectum through the anal canal so in this topic i am going to discuss about the anatomy of the rectum what is the definition for this rectal prolapse the types of prolapse etiology and pathophysiology of rectal prolapse clinical features what all investigations you do when a patient comes with rectal prolapse what are the differential diagnosis and management non operative management and operative management and the complications if you don't treat it and what are the complications that can occur after complication of a surgery and we'll conclude the topic the anatomy of rectum you know the anatomy of rectum i'm not going to uh, spare my time for that you know because in ca rectum also i have already discussed about the anatomy of rectum you can go through this then coming to the peritoneal reflection the upper one third of rectum is covered on all around by peritoneum the middle one third the peritoneal co- covers the anterior and the lateral part of the lateral surface of the rectum in the lower one third there is no peritoneal covering that is very very important then coming to the mesorectum it is present in the posterior and lateral lateral aspect of the extra peritoneal portion of the rectum it is you know rectum it has derived it has deri- derived from hindgut the content of the mesorectum are superior rectal artery and its branches superior rectal vein and its tributaries and lymphatics and lymph nodes autonomic nerves the loose areolar tissue it is surrounded by fascia propria which is an extension of pelvic fascia the mesorectum is excised along with the rectum in carcinoma and while doing dissection for this rectal prolapse we are going through this loose areolar tissue and we are mobilizing it and next is the epithelial supply superior rectal artery middle rectal artery and inferior rectal artery superior rectal artery is the uh, terminal branch of inferior mesenteric artery middle rectal artery derives from the anterior division of the internal iliac and inferior rectal artery it is the terminal branch of internal pudendal artery then coming to rectal prolapse there are two types of prolapse what is the definition of rectal prolapse that is the prolapse of either mucosa or the entire rectum it is coming out through the anal verge this condition is common in children and in elderly patients even in younger age group also prolapse is there but it is not very common the types are complete and partial complete prolapse that means the full thickness of rectum is coming out partial means only the mucosa is coming out mucosa either a portion of mucosa or circumferential uh, portion of the uh, mucosa coming out circumferentially or at one place it is coming out that is known as the partial the other one is complete even the mucosa submucosa the muscle layer everything comes out through the anal canal that is full thickness coming to complete prolapse it is also called prosodentia it is common in females you know why it is common in females because weakening weakening of the levator anal muscle and the pelvic tissues due to repeated uh, delivery maybe that is the reason the descent is always more than 3.75 cm if it is less than that then we will call it as partial prolapse it is more than usually if it is a pro, uh, prosodentia or a complete prolapse it will be anyway it will be more than 3.75 cm it contains all the layers of the rectum including the muscular layer often it is associated with the uterine descent you know because pelvic floor weakness is there so definitely you know if a female if she comes with a 
uh, rectal prolapse, she will be having a uterine prolapse also. It is otherwise called intersusception of rectum through the anal canal. One com once the complete prolapse is more than 5 cm, anteriorly it drags the peritoneum uh, as the a pouch which often contains small intestine also. So while doing a dissection from the perineal root, should be very careful in dealing with that pouch which contains that small intestine. On, on digital pushing of the rectum upwards, it reduces with a gurgling if it contains small intestine. Patulous anal sphincter is a typical feature of rectal prolapse because it always confuses with prolapsed piles and rectal prolapse. In that case, one finding is the sphincter is patulous. That means it is a case of rectal prolapse. Typically, it come, patient will be having mucus discharge and fecal incontinence also. That will come in the clinical features. So, you can when you uh, can you compare these two diagrams? The first one is partial rectal prolapse. That means only the mucosa is coming out. The second one is the whole thickness of the rectum is coming out along with a pouch of peritoneum. Then there are some factors which prevent prolapse of rectum. Just like factors which prevent hernia formation like that. There are certain factors are there. That is the curvature of the sacrum, the tilt of pelvis, the serpentine course of the rectum, you know S-shaped. That rectum is S-shaped. Two, three curvatures are there. The levator NA muscles. Then puborectalis sling. All these prevent the prolapse of rectum. So when all these mechanism fails, the patient develops rectal prolapse. That means if the curvature of the underdeveloped sacrum, the tilt turns to some other position, then levator NA muscle weakness, all this leads to development of rectal prolapse. Then coming to the, what are the causes for this rectal prolapse in infants underdeveloped sacral curve in children recurrent at when an attack of diarrhea that can leads to loss of fat tissue around the rectum and the rectum descends because of that in adults constipation constant constipation that happens especially in cases of um, psychiatric patients on psychiatric medications. And weakening of uh, weakening or malfunctioning of the pelvic floor or sphincters. Spastic pelvic floor that is called anismus. Pudendal nerve injury or neuropathy due to aging. Then sphincter dysfunction due to trauma or age. These are the causes in adults which lead to development of uh, rectal prolapse so in each age group there is certain reason is there infants children and in adults then whenever the uh, rectum starts descending what all things happens there that is the pathophysiology when the rectum passes through the opening in the pelvic floor fund this bubble moves the intersusception occurs and lateral and the rectosigmoid attachment become lax and the mesorectum lengthens. The anal sphincter stretches and that allows the rectum to prolapse out through the anal canal or anal orifice. The associated pelvic anatomic abnormalities are there. Deep anterior cul-de-sac, redundant sigmoid colon, patulous anal sphincter, Loss of posterior rectal fixation. So all these things happen along with the above pathophysiology. Then what all will be the symptoms of the patient when patient comes with rectal prolapse? The patient will say that 
Something is coming out through the anal canal during straining, coughing and lifting weights. Sometimes the patient will be having constipation. The patient, 58% of the patients comes with constipation. That may be due to a long sigmoid colon. Because of that, the patient cannot, um, uh, the motion will not come out and this uh, loaded sigmoid colon will press the rectum and that will pushes the rectum downwards. Then in some patients they will come with fecal incontinence due to lax uh, sphincter or due to pelvic floor uh, anomalies uh, or maybe due to uh, perineal injuries, perineal nerve, uh, pudendal nerve injury and all. Sometimes the patient can come with mucus discharge, rarely comes with bleeding. Then what all investigations you do when a patient comes with coming and saying that I am having a prolapsed mass while passing motion and sometimes I have to press it upwards for reducing that. So in that case, we will we will be a little bit confused. We will we don't know whether it is prolapsed piles or prolapsed rectum. So in that case, you have to ask the patient to produce the prolapse. If not obvious, in the squatting position, you have to tell the patient to sit in the toilet and make it produce that prolapse. Sometimes you have to sometimes you have to give any more so to produce to see that mass nowadays it is very easy the patient will come with a photo in the mobile and saying that see sir, sir what is coming out is like this so it is very nowadays very easy to when there is no need to make the patient squat position and make it come out then look for the associated vaginal prolapse and then uh, if the prolapse is there you can see the concentric rings and grooves in the mucosa that will come out while straining. The perineal, perianal skin escorations will be there if the patient is having recurrent um, mass coming out through the anal canal because of the soiling of the surrounding skin by uh, mucus, mucus. Then if it is chronic prolapse, the inflamed edematous and irregular surface of mucosa and you have to, in that case, you have to take a biopsy to roll out a neoplasia. Second thing is a digital examination. You have to reduce the uh, prolapse and do a digital examination. While doing the digital examination or doing a PR, you have to look for the sphincter pressure. Whether the sphincter is lax or tight. If it is lax, that is definitely is a case of rectal prolapse. But if it is a prolapsed piles in piles case it will be uh, that sphincter will be sphincter tone will be there it is not lax like this then you can go for a colonoscopy or a barium enema to exclude a tumor if a tumor is there you can take a biopsy also then another test is defecography this is to delineate the anatomy and the function of the anal canal and the pelvic floor. This is studied in various stages during defecation. Then another test is anal manometry that will help to assess the sphincter tone. EMG to uh, know the pelvic floor muscle tone. So these are the tests we do when a patient come with, comes with rectal prolapse. If the patient is having severe constipation history, that time you have to st study a colonic transit time study to know what is the colonic transit time. That will be more in case of patient coming with constipation. Then what are the differential diagnoses? It can be a prolapsed hemorrhoid or it can be a large polypoidal lesion protruding from the anal canal through the anus. Then the difference between hemorrhoids and rectal prolapse. 
the tissue folds are circumferential in case of rectal prolapse but in hemorrhoids it is at three sides three o'clock seven o'clock and eleven o'clock position but the rectal prolapse it is circumferential all around the abnormality on palpation is double rectal wall feel because one the rectum is coming out through the anal canal so you cannot you can insinuate a finger between the anal margin and the rectal bone but in case of hemorrhoid you cannot insinuate like that the resting and the resting and the squeezing pressure of the sphincter is decreased in case of rectal prolapse but it is sphincter pressure is normal in case of hemorrhoids these are the three differences one more difference is there the mucosa of rectal prolapse is pink in color but in hemorrhoid it is scarlet red in color then so you know you know the definition what is the what are the causes for that pathophysiology of rectal prolapse then what are invest what are the clinical features what are the investigations you do when a patient comes with uh, rectal prolapse then what are the diff differential diagnosis and what are the differences between uh, rectal prolapse and hemorrhoid coming to the treatment surgical correction is the treatment of choice so but in some, some children and old age if the surgery is may not be possible because of their health conditions and all so in that case only we'll go for non operative treatment non operative treatment is not a definitive treatment but still you can try it but surgical correction is the treatment of choice non operative methods are adhesive strapping of buttocks manual anal support during defecation correction of constipation perineal muscle exercises then electrical stimulation of the perineal muscles to attain the tone submucosal injection of phenol in almond oil to produce sclerosis around the rectum so that it will not come down infrared coagulation etc and surgical management there are two types of prolapse partial prolapse and complete prolapse surgical management of partial prolapse is simple excision of the prolapsed part of mucosa or circumferential excision of the prolapsed mucosa in that case we can use circular stapler just like we are doing for stapler hemorrhoidectomy we will cut a bunch of mu a all around mucosa uh, of the rectum with the help of a circular stapler so that is a simple thing by you can do it from the anal through the anal canal only so that is the management of Uh, partial prolapse simple excision of the prolapsed part or circumferential excision through a stapler and management of acute irreducible rectal prolapse so that is an emergency condition that is not a surgical management acute irreducible emergency condition you can reduce it under anesthesia to relax the sphincter and uh, when the sphincter relaxes you can reduce it by man manually and tapping and after that you can tap the buttocks together and keep the patient in the trendenberg position and you can put little salt or sugar in the topically over that region to reduce the edema or you can uh, even go do injection of hyaluron days to reduce the edema if the rectum is not viable the color if it has changed then you can do a resection of that part also that is an in emergency condition but if it is a not an emergency condition if the patient comes to the opd with a complete rectal prolapse what do you have to advise to the patient you can give an advice that you have to get it operated so what all operations you do when a patient comes with a complete rectal prolapse so two approaches are there through the perineum you can do the surgery or through the abdominal route you can do the surgery always the perineal route surgery it is not very satisfactory but abdominal operation is the satisfactory surgery through the perineal approach three types of surgeries you can do delorme's 
thresh wiring or thresh operation, ultimius operation. So these are the three operations you can do through the perineal approach. Through the abdominal approach, either nowadays open uh, laparoscopic surgery is uh, coming as a popular thing. You can either do an open surgery or a laparoscopically you can do mesh rectopexy or a suture rectopexy or a resection rectopexy. These are the three options by abdominal route. Mesh rectopexy means you are putting a mesh to strengthen the wall of rectum. You can place it anteriorly in the anterior surface of the rectum or on the posterior surface of the rectum and fix it to the sacral promontory. That mesh is fixed to the sacral promontory. So anterior placement of the mesh that is called Ripstein procedure and posterior placement of the mesh is called Wells procedure. So that is mesh rectopexy. The second type of ab uh, abdominal su uh, surgery is suture rectopexy. So in that case, what is rectopexy? Fixing the rectum to somewhere. Here we are fixing the rectum to the sacral promontory. So here instead of mesh, sometimes the mesh rejection and, uh, happens to some patients and all. And some case sometimes constipation it comes as a complication of mesh rectopexy. So they modified the surgery to a suture rectopexy. So in suture rectopexy we will put three or four sutures fixing the posterior surface of the rectum to the sacral promontory. So for this suturing we use non-absorbable synthetic material like proline. So proline sutures, three to four proline sutures we are putting by fixing, um, uh, taking through the posterior wall of the rectum, fixing to the sacral promontory. The another one abdominal surgery is resection rectopexy. Resection rectopexy means in that patient they will be having a prolonged um, sigmoid. So if the patient's complaint is constipation mainly, in that case we do a resection of the sigmoid and suturing of the cut ends and fixing the rectum to the sacral promontory along with that. So that is resection rectopexy. So what are the surgeries for? Uh, surgeries we do for complete rectal prolapse. Through the perineal approach we do three surgeries. Then through the abdominal approach either open or laparoscopically we do we can do a mesh rectopexy, suture rectopexy or resection rectopexy. Mesh can be placed anteriorly or posteriorly. If it is placed anteriorly it is called Ripstein procedure. If it is placed posteriorly, it is called Wells procedure. And the another one is you put a non-absorbable proline synthetic sutures like proline fixing the posterior wall of the rectum to the sacral promontory that is suture rectopexy and resection rectopexy especially in patient coming with the constipation with the long sigmoid. You can resect the long sigmoid and suture the cut end of the sigmoid to the rectum and fix the posterior wall of the rectum to the sacral promontory. So that is resection rectopexy. So in laparoscopically suture rectopexy we are doing always. Three to four sutures are placed. And mesh also. We can put it anteriorly or posteriorly. And nowadays laparoscopically is again advanced. It is changed to robotic rectopexy. Instead of uh, surgeon, we uh, laparoscopic instruments we are using robot to facilitate the suturing. Then the coming to the perineal operations, I have told you that there are three perineal surgeries are there. The complicate the the, the 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 complication of perineal surgery is it is high recurrence rate than abdominal operations. So we won't prefer perineal surgeries unless indicated in some patients. Indications like pediatric age group, elderly patients, 
injury or disease of the spinal cord young man i don't think young man young man i think we prefer to do a abdominal surgery then thrush repair that is especially we do i have already told you that it is in a, it is a procedure that can be uh, we do for a, uh, a either in the children or in old age patient so it is uh, the anal canal passing a thread or a um, mesh like thing or a non absorbable suture through the around the anal opening and tighten it to allow only two fingers so that the patient while passing motion while straining for motion the whole rectum will not come out only the motion will come out still after this surgery we have to give some motion softeners very difficult uh, for the patient to survive with this suture and all so still for as a short procedure we can do it and delor me procedure in this this is a uh, perineal surgery for a complete rectal prolapse the prolapsed part of the rectum is fully denuded of its mucosa that mucosa is taken out and then you can see the underlying rectal muscle that muscle is plicated and the cut end of the mucosa up and the lower part it is sutured in the next uh, diagram you can appreciate that so that is the procedure what we are doing for this delorme so mucosa from the upper part of close to the anal verge it is denuded so now it is completely denuded then the rectal muscle that is plicated after that the cut end of the mucosa cut ends of the mucosa are sutured that is the delorme procedure then ultimus procedure that is through the perineal root you are getting the rectum and the sigmoid out then you are doing a recto sigmoidectomy and suture to the anal verge then abdominal operations what we are doing in abdominal operation is we are mobilizing the rectum fully so you cut the peritoneal reflections over the rectum anterior surface and laterally from the mid middle one third of rectum and do dissect down and separate the rectum from the pararectal tissues till you reach the per, uh, levators when you reach the levators then you can lift uh, cut the uh, lateral rectal ligament so that you can lift the rectum upwards when you lift it you can at the level of sacral promontory you can put two three sutures three or four sutures on the posterior wall of rectum and you can fix it to the sacral promontory that is suture rectopexy if you want to do a suture rectopexy you put sutures if you want to put a mesh you can put mesh over that anteriorly place it anteriorly or posteriorly according to the surgeon's choice so this is that fixation of mesh posteriorly or anteriorly then next one is the resection rectopexy this we are doing for patients coming with a rectal prolapse with history of constipation in this case the patient will be having see you can see the first diagram you can see the redundant sigmoid in that case we will the excess part of the sigmoid with the mesentery you are um, cutting and suturing the ends are sutured together and fix the posterior wall posterior wall of rectum to the sacral promontory that is resection rectopexy so 
they have shown the diagram of resection rectopexy. These are the first diagram, the cut ends of this one and then it is stapled. Now you can either uh, suture also, you can put sutures also. For convenience we can use staplers. Then what are the complications if you don't treat uh, rectal prolapse? That can lead to ulceration, recurrent, uh, recurrent uh, rectal prolapse that will rub over the clothes and all. So that can produce ulceration, it can produce infection, sometimes it bleeds, sometimes thrombosis and edema of the mucosa, strangulation, urinary and fecal incontinence, spontaneous rupture with evisceration. So these are the complications if you don't treat a rectal prolapse. To conclude, consider surgery when conservative treatment fails. Careful patient selection is crucial to satisfy the outcome of surgery. Tailor surgery to the specific patient. Because patient com may be coming with constipation and rectal prolapse. Sometimes maybe the patient can be uh, coming with uh, in fre uh, frequent passage of motion, loose motion because of the incontinence of the sphincter. So in that case you have to choose operation according to the patient's complaint. Laparoscopic reptopexy allows to uh, allows for the quicker recovery and shorter hospital stay of the patient. So it is better to do a laparoscopic surgery than an open surgery. Regardless of the material used, correct suture and tag placements are crucial. If severely constipated, perform a sigmoidectomy and rectopexy. That means the resection rectopexy is good for a patient coming with constipation and rectal prolapse. So to conclude. So now you know what is the definition. What are the types of rectal prolapse complete and incomplete. What is the etiology and the factors preventing rectal prolapse and etiology of rectal prolapse in children, infants and adults. What happens, what is the pathophysiology happens in rectal prolapse? What are the clinical features, what all, with all, what all complaints the, will, the patient will come to our OPD? And what all investigations you do? And the differential diagnosis. Then the management. The non -op what are the non-operative treatment and the surgical management. Surgical management, perineal, thresh wiring, delorme, ultimase, then abdominal surgery either open or laparoscopically. You can do mesh, rectopexy, anteriorly or posterior placement of the mesh you can do or you can do a suture rectopexy or you can do a Resection rectopexy. Okay, thank you.